So now that we see Lomu, all's well in the world. They're all here. The Auckland Blues and the Natal Sharks. So there he is, the All Black captain for 1996, not captain today. Michael Jones is back onto this field where he's become so much a part of Eden Park and Auckland and New Zealand rugby history. Here's Kevin Putt, who says he'd love to have a win on this park. He's never beaten an Auckland team here. The former Waikato player, the former New Zealand Sevens player, who's the Natal halfback today. So today's referee, Wayne Erickson, begins Rugby Super 12 final for 1996, the first one, a new page being written in rugby history, and it's the black and white of Natal against the blue and white of Auckland. There was some talk about there should have been a jersey switch by Auckland, and straight away, Sean Fitzpatrick on the far side, looking across at the touch touch, somebody might have uh, uh, had him on the ground there. And we call in former All Black Grand Fox, who's very excited about the prospects in this game. Yeah, I expect the tactics today, both sides to keep the ball in hand and spread it wide a lot. I expect to see a lot of variation at line-out time by Auckland. Natal to use, Atherton and Andrews. But this is an important phase of the game at scrum time that I expect the Blues just to have a wee bit of an edge. Jeremy Thompson, Dick Muir, two solid performers in the centre. Cabo's fun the best days. A collapse, a free kick to Walken. Puck takes it. Wayne Five is number seven, and what a good Super 12 he's had. Puck number nine. And there's the kick by Thompson. That's a high one for Adrian Cashmore, who goes up with a big jump. Michael Jones to Tonu'u, number nine. And he's hurried it to the touch. And Natal have the use of the southwesterly breeze. I believe the Blues won the toss. Honeyball giving an early test to Cashmore, who was composed under the high ball. Well, Junior Tonu'u spent a lot of time just punting up the sideline early this morning, just testing that breeze. John McBeth with us on the sideline today. Grant Fox and Keith Quinn with you. The one world of sport team as Allen throws. Up goes Mark Andrews. That's going to be a problem for Auckland with excellent jumpers. And look at that. Five is straight into uh, Zinzan Brook, I think it was. A big hit. Here they go. They've got a bit of a lineup. Honeyball number 10. Only five or six metres out. Well, a good start from Natal. Andrews winning the first line out. Interesting to see that Natal had a short line out and they've advanced to a very good scrum position, 15 metres out from the Blues goal line. About with a 25 metre blind side, and I'll expect him to come to the right. Honeyball is standing short, looking to run to the right hand side of the scrum. And remember, on the right hand side, the battle of the wings is James Small against Jonah Lomu. There's Small, bottom uh, of the screen. And standing off quite wide too is Junior Tonu'u, the Auckland Blues halfback. Out of picture there. Well, Yobir has snuck up too behind the scrum, and here they come to the right. Michael Jones, number six, wrapped up Tyshman twice actually. Now they swing it to the left. It goes to Muir. He kicks wide for Kabos from the best agent, and he was in front. Joel Bandiri got him, but referee Erickson was onto his case. And Vendiri didn't need the pressure tackle. This man, Cabos van der Vestagen, was ahead of the kick. Well, it's not often you see that. Normally, it's a defensive side that's penalised, but van der Vestagen, who's a great finisher and got great speed, just getting in front of Dick Muir there. Now, I watched uh, this morning at training the Auckland Blues lineup. They, they move, use so many variations. If they use any of them today, we'll be quite surprised. Or well, you'll be surprised at what you see, I think. Well, have on their own ball. One. Have a look at this one. Olo Brown's down at the back. Yes, and it moved all the Lucy's up the front. 
and they underarmed it in and they got the ball so it's going to be tricky stuff from the blues Ironic clark who takes that straight approach in the midfield rickleman tonu spencer the stabbing bouncer and it's gone to jonah cashmore now the sharks are scrambled 22 middle line tonu Clark again at the 22. And it's this time it's Lomu who plays scrum half number 11. It's coming again for the Blues. And they've got a penalty. Five minutes gone. The crowd can sit down now. What a thrilling passage of play that was as it swept upfield. Well, the Blues have declared their intention this afternoon. The ball will go wide to the wings at every occasion ball thrown to the front of the line out that's one out of the bag of tricks there'll be more to come how about those line outs though that was Olo Brown and Craig Dow went down to the back but it was a decoy because they underarmed it to the front so we're obviously going to see a lot more of that today well we're going to need to because Andrews and Atherton are just about as good as there are in the world at line out time and so we don't want to be throwing the ball near them we've got to move it away from them so variation is the key and watch as the game progresses when it's in the tail throw into the line out the Blues at times will not compete for possession. They will gear up for defence and try and knock the Natal Sharks over behind the advantage line. And, and you say this is a game which could be won by the lapses and the concentration on defence, Grant? Defence is critical in any aspect, but I believe the winner today will be the best defensive side. Here's Adrian Cashmore after six minutes. And he slides it through, and the Blues are first on the board. Let's go to John McBeth on the sideline. John, uh, that is a, a white-hot atmosphere we've got here today. I have never experienced anything like it here at Auckland, uh, Keith. That was just huge when the players ran on the field at the start. I don't think they'll be able to hear the calls at all. So it's a Natal throw. Now let's look for this uh, suggestion from Grant Fox that Auckland might not compete in the jumping at uh, this line-out. So this is a Natal throw, Brook lining up. We'll see whether the Blues employ the tactics they used in Durban a couple of weeks ago, and that is not competing very often at Natal's throwing. Allen throws. And nobody jumped. Nobody jumped on the Auckland side. So Natal are going to win their ball. Plenty of Auckland players are standing off, you see. And that's to stop the burst around the Ruck and Mall. Well spotted, Grant Fox. Key for the Blues this afternoon is to stop people like Henry Honeyball getting in behind the advantage line. So if they gear up for defence around the Rucks and Malls, they may be able to shut them down, knock them over behind the advantage line, which is critical. Now change of subject for you, Grant. Let's talk about your specialty goal kicks. Here's one coming from about 54 metres. Well, I'm not surprised Joubert's having a shot at goal. The wind is behind, although it's coming over his right shoulder just a wee bit, so the breeze will basically hold the ball straight. Joubert's a little bit of a hit and miss merchant, but when he strikes them, they can go a long way. And he's got a reasonable breeze there too, Grant. Just gusting occasionally. A lot of noise in the stadium. It's on its way. It's going to be short. It's not a bad effort, you know. It went about... Uh... I went about 50 metres. So we've got a fascinating duel in the lineouts to look for today. Michael Jones takes it back to Blows. It looks like Auckland are going to do quite a bit of the unorthodox today. There were three passes along the 22 to take a quick dropper, and Michael Jones took it. Now, Nawamu hasn't found touch. Here's small number 14, Zinzanbrook. He's kept it in play. Joubert and Honeyball are going back. Here's Henry Honeyball, number 10. A left footer from Joubert to restore order. Well, isn't Zinzan Brook skillful? Keeping the ball in play. And the Blues from that 22-metre line drop out have had a net gain of just over 30 metres. OK, let's look at the line-outs here and see what they've got. This is the Fitzpatrick throw-in. 
stacked up normally so far. Let's go! So they've thrown it to Brooker, bounced off his shoulder. Well done by Fitzpatrick, who uh, rebounded it out into safe territory. That's the halfway mark. Number one is Craig Dowd. And there's Charles Rickleman, the young man who's bidding for a place in the All Blacks. There's a Natal player down on the deck at halfway. Could be Mark Andrews. It is. Spencer through. Lomu! A try for Lomu, which raises the roof. Well, the big guy is pumped for the Super 12 final. Well done, Carlos Spencer. There was criticism about Spencer being picked, but he drew the defenders to him. Lomo in space, one on one. Joubert didn't like this side, I can tell you. Good to see the prop there, Adrian Garvey coming across from cover. But Jonah, here we see it head on. Spencer hitting the blind side hard and fast. Small trying to close down Lomu, and that's where he got in trouble. Lomu one on one. There it is, Joubert couldn't hold him. Too big, too strong. Five points to the Blues. Who can hold Lomu when he's in that kind of mood? 21 years of age, 118 kgs. That's about 18 and a half stone. Here's John Macbeth. Yes, Mark Andrew. There's a bit of damage done to Mark Andrew. We saw him down and injured before the try. And now he's receiving attention. They have uh, John Slade warming up, so this could be a disaster for Natal. Have the view for Adrian Cashmore, and he's kicking across the southwesterly breeze here, so it'll hold the ball relatively straight. So all he really has to do is start it at middle, and it'll hold its line. 12 minutes gone. So it's a hook our way, but Lomu's marvellous try. Eight to nil. Auckland Blues lead. And look at Lomu going right across those wingers. Vendiri and Lomu have changed sides again. Well, the tactic here is the tail kick deep. Zinzan will take the ball, and they'll run Lomu straight off the ruck. that penalty for the Blues forwards being cleaned out while the ball was still in the air. That's illegal. Once the player is trying to secure the ball in the air, he is not allowed to be tackled, and any transgression is an automatic penalty. So now we come to this fascinating line-out battle again. Uh, Michael Jones was at the front, he's come down at the back, so let's see what they're going to cook up. It's more or less orthodox this time. Blowers right down to the back against Fivey. And now that might encourage Auckland to go to the unorthodox because they lost that one on their throw. From the Natal bench, the news is that Mark Andrews uh, had a knock to the head, but the uh, physio says he'll be okay. Honeyball going for position, so they're going to try the lineouts again. Well, perhaps after the last kick Joubert had, he considered it was just out of his range. And with the line-out prowess that Natal have and Atherton and Andrews, they're in a very dangerous attacking position here. Thompson, number 30, Muir, number 12, Honeyball, number 10. The youngest guy in the back line for Natal Sharks is 27-year-old James Small. There's Vickers van Heerden. And again, easy... Easy work for Andrews, but Auckland have positioned themselves with a few hanging off. And so there they go in for the tackles now. So isn't it a wonderful game when you can have such variation? A bit of uh, heavy work with a boot going in there on that Auckland play on the ground to the left. Muir, not known as a, a big break man in the midfield. Garvey, who chased back and tried to get Jonah Lomu. 
and there's Gary Teichman, and there's Putt, and here's Small. And it's gone on to the blue side, and this is an attacking kick from Cashmore. He didn't try to find touch. Joubert to Thompson. Good run by Thompson to Small, but Jonah gets him, and the game is all over the field. We've got a thriller on our hands. Tonu not trying to find touch. It should be a bit heavy going back there. Doesn't look as, as though he was bouncing on his feet, running back. Terrific game all over the park. A lot of speed, but clever play by Junior Tonu. Adopting the Blues tactics of not kicking the ball to touch. And from a very dangerous counter-attack from Natal, we find the Blues back on attack with their throw to the line out on the Natal 10 metre line Fitzpatrick good jump there by uh, Robin Brook Michael Jones in fact got that one Spencer Clark blowers on his shoulders good ball here coming for Auckland 40 metres out Good run there by Fitzpatrick. Spencer again. Nawamu. The second 5 8 is coming to sharpen up that Auckland back line late in the season. Tonu'u. Tremendous run by Michael Jones. Auckland are playing scintillating football here. Tonu'u. It's going wide. It's gone to Vendiri. Here's Cashmore. Is out there, Bowers. They're right on the line, and the try is scored. John Nawamo. So let's see who did get the try. Grant, who do you I see the forward replay. Vendiri, I thought would I thought the Blues had blown the try here. Cashmore did well, taking on Steve Atherton, freeing his arms. Blowers, who's ever present in support. Superb tackle there by Jeremy Thompson. But Johnny Nuamo in support. He must have grounded the ball just over the try line. I see on the head on replay. Cashmore here did very well to keep the big man Atherton at bay and free the ball in the tackle to Blowers, who got brought down superbly by Jeremy Thompson. And here we have Noamo backing up like a good loose forward, and there it is, must just on the line. It was a try by John Noamo. Here we're going to see it again on the forward replay, the head-on version. Cashmore going wide. Look at these locks out there, and desperate men. And there's Blowers down, but you see coming over the top is John Nawamu, and as, it's, as Blowers lunges, it's Nawamu who gets it off him and puts his hand on it. Share that one, I think. Well, they just about could, didn't they? Two and a half points each, maybe. This is a difficult kiss, kick for Adrian Cashmore, right into the teeth of the southwesterly breeze. Got to start this outside right, and if it gets the distance, it'll only just drop over the bar. He likes it, but it's just come across the front. Good effort from Adrian Cashmore. John Nawamo, he's really stiffened up the Auckland Blues back line, and they're into the lead now by 13 to nil. Rugby Super 12, the final on One World of Sport. The Curry Cup champions of South Africa against the New Zealand national provincial champions and Ranfurly Shield holders. I really do think there should have been a jersey change for the playing of this game, but we can't uh, worry about that too much now, but that is very busy to, on the eye when the players are all in scrambling for the ball. Tonu'u, Auckland 13. Auckland Blues 13, Natal Sharks. Let's give them their proper titles. A nil. Michael Jones. Into blowers. Tonu'u. Cashmore. Honeyball coming over. The big jump. It's gone to Vickers van Heerden. 
Kevin Butt. Honeyball. Oh, late charge there on Honeyball that the referee had his back turned, I think, didn't see it. No, he spotted it. Referee spotted it. And that is against Honeyball. Well, the charge was against Honeyball, the penalty to Natal. And here we see here, Honeyball on the forward replay, standing very flat as he always does. Andrew Blowers could have bailed out of that. Really gave away what probably is going to be a gift three points to Henry Honeyball. The pace of this game is outstanding. And the Blues so far have a significant edge on the speed of their forwards. Their ball retention is superb. They're turning the phases over very quickly. And really, that's why they're 30 nil ahead on the scoreboard. 30-year-old Henry Honeyball sends it through the post and the Sharks are on the board. Been a lot of talk about the booing at Eden Park last week. Well, it didn't silence them. They were into it in full cry. Well, Henry Honeyball would like that, John. Yeah. If, they, if they were deathly silent, I'll tell you what, he'd be very nervous. <laughs> he likes the noise, I can assure you. Short stabbing kick from Cashmore to resume play. 13 points to three, a 10-point margin for the Auckland Blues. And here's Andre Henry LaRue, known to all and sundry as Ollie. The big roly-poly prop, and now it's Honeyball again. Who's not known as a runner, but he's straight through. And he's distanced, and he's, that is a chance that's gone begging. Oh, that's awful play by Natal to have a man cut through like that and then have no one with him. Let's see if they can get something out of it. was forced a prop playing at 5-8 that was Garvey ball bouncing free for Lomu and you'll see it in the picture here James Small coming this is a great one-on-one -on -one contest <laughs> Jonah just swatted him off Gary Teichman really superb in cover defense but Carlos Spencer had followed Lomu all the way and that's five points soon to be seven under the black dot Cashmore it turns it into a seven-pointer. And it's 20-3. to three. Jonah is running hot today. And so are the Auckland Blues as we look at it again. Look at the run by Small. He just died. Flicked him off. Great charge by Teichman. Brought Lomu down, but Spencer had shattered him all the way down the track. What a game of rugby. We're seeing in the Super 12 final, it's 20 points to three to Auckland. James Small stayed down on his knees for a long time after that try was scored. Well, I know there's a long way to go, Keith, but we all thought it would be a high-scoring game, but there's one team doing all the high-scoring at the moment, and the Natal Sharks are struggling to get into the match. Unbelievable that uh, Natal allowed Henry Hunterball after that superb shock, surprise, call it what you like, the break that took him up the middle of the field. Nobody within cooey of him. So the Sharks have got a lot of work to do to get in this. And they rolled LaRue the wrong way. So this is ball for Orkham. Tonutu. Cabos from the Vestation. The tackler was none other than Michael Jones on the halfway strike.
Good chase from Fitzpatrick there. We got the Blues Brothers here. The band. It's not very musical, though. It's just sort of dead it, Auckland. <laughs> Don't I'm you sure like they it? Do better. <laughs> Don't you like it, John? I wonder if they're going to order two chickens and nine pieces of dry white toast. <laughs> or the other way around, is it? I forget now. It's the only film I've got at home on video. Here's Honeyball from halfway, and Natala in disarray. He took that too... I think he took that too quickly, Grant. Well, Honeyball doesn't waste much time. And so not quite having the power there, but the Blues' tactics of not competing at line-out time is working again. They're very geared up on defence, and they're coming forward, chasing the kick that's not going out and making offensive tackles behind the advantage line of Natal. 26 minutes gone, first half. It's 20 points to three. Here's Natal's captain, Teichman. Away to Honeyball. The tackler was Blowers. Three tries to nil to the Blues. Dick Muir ran into Olo Brown, which is the same as running into the side of a building. The difference we're seeing so far is when the Natal Sharks have the ball, they're unable to turn the ball over quickly at second phase time. The Blues are able to keep the ball off the ground get the put into the scrum, but they're also able to organise their defence to come forward and make those offensive tackles. Nice, smooth piece of passing there, Bandiri, Cashmore. They're just coming towards the halfway mark on the blue side. Tonudu, Spencer, Nawamo, that's the halfway line there. Lots of variation from the Blues, and they have the lineup. Zinzan Brook. Oh, he puts Spencer beautifully into space. Lobo and Small again. And Vendiri there too. And the referee has ruled a 22 dropout here. That was a great pass, wasn't it, from Spencer to Noama, was it? Coming on the inside of him, not even looking. You see on the Ford replay, this is an interesting ruling. Referee Wayne Erickson has ruled this an attacking kick. And therefore, despite the fact it went touch and goal, James Moore did not touch this ball. He's ruled it as a 22 dropout, not a scrum back where the ball was kicked. So Dick Muir drops from the 22 back to Cashmore. There's a lot of these Auckland players playing well and being involved. And here's one who's believed his role is to be up and in the action all day. Cashmore catches Joubert. And Auckland are swarming on Natal in this game. When you've got guys at the back coming up and playing at the front like Adrian Cashmore is, it's a whole new dimension. There he is down the bottom of the ruck there. I'll tell you what, Keith, there are some tired boys already. And we've played 28 minutes of this match, and some of these guys are blowing hard. Cashmore, I think, asking for some water there. But Vendiri was across on the left wing at that stage, and if Natal had secured the ball, we were in trouble down the left flank. flank. Gotta stop saying we, don't I, Keith? I'm getting a bit excited up here. It's, it's the royal we. We, we, uh, we as a nation. It's we for it? New Zealand, isn't it today? <laughs> That's right. Hold it up. Keep it steady. Hold it. Thank you. Michael Jones on the near side. That's Vickers van Heerden, number six for Natal. Bad pass, but well picked up by Joubert. Thompson feeds Honeyball. Zinzan Brook blocks him. Short side. Strong hit by Clark. Lost forward. Ironi Clark. Very powerful block. Jolted the ball forward. And see how the Blues are going forward on defence all day. Making those offensive tackles I mentioned earlier. Stopping the Natal Sharks dead in their tracks and forcing the odd error. Tonu. Nawamu left out. Aroni Clark. See how Nawamu rips in there to be like the first loose man there. Tonu. Spencer. Small meets him. 
Thompson. Honeyball. Putt, the left footer. Deep behind Cashmore. And that's a good one from the little Waikato man, originally from Cambridge, Kevin Putt. Well, Carlos Spencer made an error there. You don't need to decoy John Alomu. You give John Alomu the ball. It's a quick throw in and a clearance for Auckland. I think that's an indication. Natal struggling at the bit with the pace of the game. They were dreamily walking down. Graham Henry and Rex Davey. That's Davey to the left, Henry to the right. The Auckland coach and manager. Look at this line out. Steve Atherton's had his hands on his hips for the last 10 seconds. Wayne Fivey down the back, his hands on hips. One of the socks is down. He's too tired to pull it up. Yes, they do. They're looking disarray. Up goes Andrews. Putt. Hide a honey ball to Muir. Another tackle by Michael Jones in midfield. Putt. Vickers from here to number six. 20 points to three. So that's against uh, Robin Brook for joining on the side. It was actually Rickleman, Keith. And I'd like to see a replay of that if we get a chance because I think Rickleman may have been a little bit hard done by there. Referee Wayne Erickson saying, join your own wall from behind your own men. But I believe Rickleman came from behind the last man of the ruck. Well, here we'll see it here on the forward replay. The ball gels. Just a wee bit here. Watch for Rickleman coming out of the top of your screen. There he is there. He is. There's the shot at goal from Honeyball, and through it goes. 20 to 6. What can lead? And we've got eight minutes still to play until halftime. See so Cashmore here. He'll probably be looking for the little short kickoff that the Blues have been practicing all week. So the game resumes. 20 points to six. The action is on one world of sport. Now I'm guided back with his hand through there. And there's Wayne Five in number seven, but it's lost forward. Well, here's a chance for the ball to go to Jolie Vendiri. Not much play's gone his way today, and he's been on fire throughout Super 12. Perfect opportunity for the Blues to go wide towards Vendiri's wing. You see Jonah Lomu, he was over on the right, now he's come back on the left wing side. So vendiri has gone back to the original side. Just noticed here, while well, Vendiri's on the right, Lomu was sneaking up to the scrum. There could well be a close move called here, and Cashmore is in close. Here we see to the right of the screen, and he'll be looking to follow Lomu through the middle. This is a game plan by Auckland, which has been extremely well thought out. They fired all the TV cameras away from training on Thursday. And uh, this is the result. There's some secret stuff planned. Cashmore. Caught by Putt. Quick throw taken to LaRue. To Teichman. So Natala trying their own bit of invention. Garvey. 40 metres from the Blues line. Spinning ball. Honey ball is through again. Forward pass ruled by referee Erickson. Muir is caught by Cashmore. And well done, Michael Jones, because Henry Honeyball was gone. And here we see sniping flat. Jones tracked him all the way and forced the error there to Dick Muir. Really forced the forward pass, and Cashmore did well to pick up Muir, even though play had been blown up. Well, Gary Teichman is down, the number 18 captain for Natal. He went down very quickly and stayed there, and there's quite a bit of concern. He just stayed. He was prone on the ground for a good 15 seconds or so. Oh, there we are, up to his feet. Dieter Krisa is waiting to come on. Michael Jones, a super tackle. And also, James Small was getting ice uh, put on his left hamstring, so maybe things aren't uh, totally 100% out there for Natal at the moment, apart from on the scoreboard. A bit of drama there because Gary Teichman is staggering uh, about. And as he went back, the referee was a bit concerned and grabbed him by the shirt. Thank you. 
So we'll watch the Natal captain in the next few minutes. Still six minutes to play till half time. Ball up, let's keep down, please. Come on, and while the Blues down. are on defence here, really 30 yards out from their own goal line, Cashmore is sneaking up on the left of the scrum. So look for the play to come from Tonu to Cashmore to Lomu. Status gone to Nawamu to Clark. The turning scrum took the tide of the play across to the right. Now it swings to Spencer, to Cashmore, to Lomu. And uh, James Small, who prides himself on the tackle, is sort of only getting Jonah by the coattails today. Back you go. Take it back, please. Let's roll off blue hands. Let's go. <laughs> James is happy with that. It's the first time he's got hold of Jonah all day and actually held him. But again, I believe the Blues made a mistake on that last attack. Spencer's got to let the ball go. You don't run long in this, into space. You give it to him. Nice burst. Teichman now from punt. Teichman seems to have recovered. Look at the lead that the Auckland Blues have over the Natal Sharks. And Honeyball is through again. And he's put you in under the sticks. And bit of trouble under the posts. Joubert jets to the way. Vendiri approached him after the try was down. But it is down. And it's 20 to 11. Well, very clever double around move here between Honeymill and Muir. Ball being held up by Dick Muir, as you see on the forward replay. Honeyball this time delayed the pass, but Joubert got to him. And that was the difference between this time and the last time when the attack failed. And really nothing in that. Perhaps Jolie didn't need to do that, but there was nothing in it. Joubert did not need to react the way he did. Two from three, Honeyball. Well, that's changed the game because the Sharks are now within striking distance. Here we go again on the forward replay, the, the front-on version. Honeyball has three times broken the line. He's not known as a runner. And it even looks a bit inexperienced the way he... Uh, Runs the ball there, but he put Joubert into space. Let's see what happened that incident behind the line. Uh, Andre Joubert didn't like the way Vendiri rolled over, but he held out the big left lead and uh, kept him at bay. 20 points to 13. We've got a thrilling game on our hands here at Eden Park. One world of sport with you, Honeyball pushing deep, finding space. The tide of this game has turned a wee bit, but well, it was all the Blues in the first 30 minutes of the game, really. And the Tail Sharks have hit back in the last six or seven minutes. Important here from a Blues perspective that they hold out at least and not concede more points before half time, and obviously, preferably, gain more. Allen throws, Andrews jumps, now putt. Honeyball has become an important figure in this game with three clean breaks and he's had three good goals as well Honeyball though this time he's caught Clark Cashmore checks in from fullback James Small right across the field that's because Lomu's out there on the right wing see Jonah up on the right wing but they didn't release it and here's a chance for Natal from a reasonably handy position to get right up close by halftime. Well, I applaud the Blues' tactics of keeping on trying to run it, but that time a kick was needed from the turnover. Joubert was out of position, and Spencer needed to put a big right foot to it down the right-hand touchline. We chose to run it. Mistake was forced. An opportunity for Honeyball to get three points. So maybe Small was out there because he'd seen Lomu sneak over to the right wing side. So there's the unsightly pile up there which led to the penalty for Natal and here is Henry Honeyball. Natal are fighting back. And it's there. Worried looks in the crowd now as Henry Honeyball is just about on his own.
played the Sharks back into the game. Sean Fitzpatrick. We must kick the ball off better. I should say the Blues, shouldn't I, Keith? Must kick the ball off a little better because they've just given the ball to the Sharks. It's important that Cashmore gets this on the button so that the Blues can compete. He sent the uh, deep. Bandiri. Charge down by Joelli. This is an, uh, interesting, the way they swap wins. I've, I've never really seen that done with any consistency. Vendiri and Lomu. Well, I believe that's just for the chase. At kickoff time, Vendiri is very, very quick, possibly quicker than Lomu. And so that's just when they do the high lob kick to give Vendiri a chance to get through on it. So out of shot, Vendiri's gone back onto the right wing. Up goes Andrews. Van Heerden, Atherton with him, and the rest of the Natal pack. Honey ball, small. Go, 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 So as that uh, play comes to an end, so does the first half. The whistle is gone. And we look down on the sunlit field. We've had a dramatic first half. Auckland burst away and led by 20 to 3 at the end of the first quarter. But Natal took the second quarter. And now it's 20 to 16 at the break. Stay with us. You won't want to miss the second half of this one. Not well. Eden Park and Auckland, and in the halftime break, a little shower passing over Eden Park, so there's just a little bit of moisture in the air and on the grass as the second half of this dramatic Rugby Super 12 final is about to play out. You're watching with One World of Sport, and it's 20 points to 16 to Auckland. They lead by three tries to one, 20 to 16, but anything could happen in the second half. There's Lomu who scored a try and made a thrilling run to create a second one for Carlos Spencer, who's been very busy this afternoon. And Michael Jones, the rest of the Auckland Blues, set for the second half. Today's referee, Australia's number one, Wayne Erickson, and the second half begins with Cash Moore's kick. Deflected on to Natal's side, to Honeyball. And that was Michael Jones, I think, making him... A tackle to begin the second half. So Junior Tonu'u, the Auckland halfback, looking a bit keen. So maybe they're going to swing it early in the second half. Spencer, no one will number 12. Craig Dowd rumbles up, and that's inside the 22. Coming again for Carlos Spencer. This time it's the Ronnie Clark. telling right now that Auckland's opened up. Well, this is very clever play by Carlos Spencer, as we see on the forward replay. This is the second cut. The first cut had taken out a lot of the loose forwards who were on the bottom of the previous ruck, and that created a bit of space for Ronnie Clark to go over under the post. Here we have a head-on view. Tonu clears the ball to Spencer, who ran wide, drawing Five out wide. Clark able to cut back inside, through Honeyball, too fast for the forward. Really, well, that's a great try for Clark. It was pretty poor tackling by the Natal Sharks. So Clark is through, cradled the ball into his chest when he got near the line. He wasn't going to let that one go. And the man who hurt Natal with a try in the round-robin game that won the game for Auckland has started them in the second half with a great score to open it up now to 27 to 16. Honeyball kicks off. Now Natal started the game and were shattered. And uh, that was a bad beginning for them in the second half. Van der Vestesen, who's a real runner. Gary Teichman, Natal, 
Well, thrown caution to the wind there as Mark Andrews joins. It's gone to Tanuku. Rickleman. The Ronnie Clark again. Charles Rickleman. He's away. What a start by Orkin to the second half. Two tries in three minutes. Charles Rickleman. Here we see, just afterwards, Captain Gary Tyson complaining that the ball was at ruck time and therefore the Blues weren't entitled to claim it. Rickleman, a sleight of hand, and isn't this just reward for Charlie Rickleman, who's had an outstanding Super 12 series, breaking free from poor tackling again from the tail. Dick Muir that time couldn't hold on to him, and Rickleman, who was fast for a big man, showed him a clean pair of heels. And diving in beautifully, swooping in like a swallow. And Charles Rickerman, the old Auckland grammar schoolboy captain, playing the game of his life on Eden Park today. And more and more people are saying his name correctly now. It's Rickerman. It'll be right across the headlines with a try like that. Well, Zinzan Brook at halftime, we could hear him on the microphones asking for a big start. The first 10 minutes, fellas, he said, and I won't repeat the words he used, but he wanted intensity in the first 10 minutes, and he's got it from the Blues. Look at this for a dive. The Olympic Games coming up at One World of Sport. They won't do a better one at Atlanta than that one by Charles Rickleman. away 32 to 16 Charles Rickerman's try means Orchid are double Natal now but it's not over yet but at halftime Graham Henry was just devastated with his team he said he couldn't believe the way they lost concentration towards the end well they picked it up again straight away Spencer deep to Funder Vesthuisen running it up hard and fast Robin Brooks stopped him number one is Oli LaRue Putt Fivey super tackle on Fivey and it was Charles Rickleman who made the tackle now he gets in and makes another one remember the All Blacks are looking for a blindside flanker Rickleman is a lock today can play that game pretty well with the speed he showed. And now here can Orkin try to tighten the screws here. Vendieri. Small deflection. Lost forward, says referee Erickson. A thrilling game now, Grant Fox. Trouble there on the floor. Well, the pace of this game is unbelievable. Some tired bodies at the end of the second, first half. They've come out at the start of the second, and the speed is incredible. James Small did very well here. Vendieri, very quick. He was turned on the inside by Small, which enabled Thompson to make the tackle. And just the littlest of knock-ons, I think, by Cashmore there in support. Let's go. Let's go, Blue. Jeremy Thompson. Deflected by Tonu there. The referee has called him offside. Intentional knock on. Yeah, intentional knock on, sorry. Now here's Natal. Ellen. Scottish, uh, ex Scottish international. And the Scottish management are here today to watch the game. Tyshman stopped by his opposite number and captain Zinzan Brook. Shifting the ball wide. Number two offside for the side of the ball. Kevin Putt, a little spark again. Again to Allen. And they're working in hard now, Natal.
at the break, Ian McIntosh, the Natal coach, was quite buoyant. He said, really, if they they should have scored the try, of course, that Honeyball started, and um, they shouldn't have conceded that one down the other end. So, in fact, at halftime, they could well have been in front. And he said, just take it up like you did in the last 15 minutes or so, and we're in this game. Well, what happened? Exactly the opposite. Well, the key to the last 15 minutes of the first half, John, was that the Natal forwards were able to take the Auckland loose forwards out of play, and when the ball was run back, there were holes on the inside back defence. Running it up from the back again. That's Vickers van Heerden. And Charles Rickerman, another huge tackle on the sideline. Fitzpatrick, near halfway. Now, Michael Jones stepped in there and just stepped slow, slow things down because it is Jones who calls the shots at line-out time. Zinzan was screaming at Junior to hold on to the ball. Play's been all over the place in the last five or six minutes. It needs to be settled down just a wee bit. Spencer needed to find touch at that last penalty. Blowers. Fivey. Rickleman. John Allen again. Teichman. Tough battle. Putt. Honeyball. Fivey. Look at that. Rickerman and Jones. Across the top. Yeah. Across the top. And it's against uh, Blowers for a high tackle. Going for position, 40 metres out. And they've whipped it right down to the goal line. Here we have, it's actually Michael Jones and referee Wayne Erickson on the forward replay. It's quite right. Michael just a little bit high there and Natal have chosen very wise tactics here declined the shot at goal they'll be looking towards Andrews at the front and don't be surprised if the guys from the tail wrap around the front and try and come down this five metre area they have got some set plays at line out time Natal this close to the goal line and so they'll be looking to work one of them here you see where Fitzpatrick standing at the front of the line at Tonu standing off So John Tonu is standing where the hooker usually stands. And now here it is. Allen are in two blowers. The number three is Garvey. There's uh, the ball with the honey ball again. Look at the desperation of these tackles. Muir, number 12. 32 to 16. Ten minutes into the second half. There's the blue zone ahead. Play, 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 play. Over the ball. And Kevin Putt swung a punch in there, and Carlos Spencer saw it. And now it's a bit awkward with the referee being knocked over. It's off, please. It's off, please. Now, if we see a replay of that, I think Kevin Putt's got a bit naughty in there, number nine. So, referee Erickson calling out Putt. So, look at Putt there to the left when he gets caught. Throws one. Wasn't a very good one. And then brought the knee in a couple of times, which uh, started the, uh, the dockyard brawl. Well, that looked like it was in front of referee Wayne Erickson, and I don't think that'll be the last we see of that one or hear of it because Wayne Erickson did not penalise Kevin Putt, so they can take that to the judiciary afterwards. Perhaps, Keith, there'll be more come of this. Tough game, lots to play for. Rugby Super 12 final. Tashman, the captain. Can he get it down, though? The Auckland Blues threw him back, and also Garvey. And the hero there was Rickleman again. Putt, that might be a penalty try call. No, it's not, just a penalty. The way Brook came through, the penalty is awarded. A penalty try could have been considered. Five is taken it, and I don't think anyone else was ready. Putt, Hunterball, Atherton, Small gets it. We're going to have a high-scoring game as the rain whips in. James Small, the top try scorer 
in Rugby Super 12, that's another one. It was only a matter of time, really, and all credit to the Natal Sharks here. They chose not to take the penalties. They kept bashing away at the Blues line, who had defended stoutly indeed, but ultimately... And Tal just kept working away to free James Small in space to score the try. And it's pelting down. Good luck, John, down on the sideline. 13th try in Rugby Super 12 by James Small. He's the leading individual try scorer. Actually, penalty tries at the top of the table. There's been 15 of those. Honeyball. And it's through. Natal. No, it's outside. Natal striking back there with a try, 32 to 21. That's what it is at Eden Park. And 30 minutes in the second half have gone. So back at Eden Park, the weather forecast this morning was of a big storm approaching the city and was said to be coming in later tonight with uh, hail and thunderstorms and everything. Well, this is probably the, the edge of it. So let's hope that this shower passes over. We won't mind the rain lashing down later tonight if we can keep the game in reasonable condition now. But a key personality in the Natal team, of course, and he's lost it forward, and this is a good position for the Blues. Fitzpatrick's gone down. Garvey number three. Marvellous view across this famous rugby stadium. And it's a sellout today. As we look at the score up there, and we see it on the ca caption, an 11-point margin for Auckland. Kevin Putt, the Natal halfback, is coming off. Robert Dupre has been warming up for a while and you'll see Dupre run away to the right of him. Yes, there he goes, number 18 onto the field and Kevin Putt, the former Waikato and New Zealand Sevens halfback, comes off in the Super 12 final. And the play started really before Robert Dupre had got across there. And now here's Joubert and Small, Nawamu, Clark, Cashmore. An attacking kick by Cashmore and Vendere is chasing hard it's to the touchline it goes. Well, as the rain really has passed now from the southwest, we're only going to get showers. The last one was heavy, but it's made the ball a bit greasy. So holding on to it at tackle time becomes more difficult. Ball security is important, so both teams are going to have to take a little more care in that department now that the ball is a little wet. Well, you can see Chandler in the background there, Jason Chandler. Uh, Rickleman has come off for Auckland for the moment anyway. Chandler is uh, just warming up on the sideline, ready to go on. So he can't go in yet. Auckland are down to 14 at the moment. Dupria, Honeyball. Dupria again. Blowers the tackle. In goes Zim Zanbrook. He's robbed it. Robin Brook has got it. It's 15 metres out. And intercept by Small. But he was offside, says referee Erickson. James won't be happy. We need to see a replay of this because James Small is very quick, very quick. And he's unhappy at being caught offside. Here we see, yes, he was. Top of the picture here. Probably two or three yards in front of the last man at the breakdown. That's offside. Although James obviously thought he wasn't. I'll tell you what, from this side of the field too, Joel Vendere was just warming up to the chase. And he was going to enjoy it, I think. And you were going to follow him down the sideline, John? Yes, yes, hobble after him. I know who would have got third in that race. <laughs> Joel Vendere. Charles Ruckelman has damaged an AC joint. So he's uh, on the bench, staying on the bench, wrapped up. And it looks as though Putt has a calf muscle injury. I'll just... Verify that shortly. This is bread and butter for Adrian Cashmore. We look right down the field as Cashmore sends it through. And Auckland are 35 and Natal are 21.
So once more, Natal are facing an uphill struggle. Well, they're doing to the South Africans what the South Africans started last year at the World Cup. They're playing this uh, music on the PA, and it's We Will Rock You. And so the crowd have joined in. Lamu at the 22. They've torn his shots off. Get the screens. Jonah Lamu has lost his shots. Somebody handed him a pair of shorts. I reckon those shorts that, the, that came off, they ought to go to the uh, International Rugby Hall of Fame and go in a little glass case. I tell you what, despite the fact they ripped, you could cut them down and you'd still get a pair of shorts out of them. <laughs> Several <laughs> look, pairs. Look at Honeyball here. He was committed to the tackle, but gee, I tell you what, that hurt him. All credit to him getting up. Jonah did well here. Junior needed to fling the ball wide. We're not going to see that, but if that ball had gone wide, there was trouble for Natal on the left. Well, there's the injuries in both camps. You can see there. Van Heerden. Van Heerden, yes, he's uh, bleeding. <laughs> well, I don't need to tell you. And, but just away to his left, there we are. Andrew Blowers is down. He limped off to the sideline. Now, remember, they've already got uh, one replacement on there for Rickleman. And Kevin Nepier is warming up on the sidelines for the Auckland team. This is an important... We're not going to see Adrian Cummins. Andrew Blowers there. It's like an ankle injury. Physio Paul Wilson attending Andrew Blowers. Important he gets back on the field because the replacement situation is not looking so good for the Blues at present. Well, we've got Errol Brain there, of course, haven't they, as a, a loose forward. I talked to Kevin Putt, and he said he had a calf muscle injury before he went into the game and uh, unlucky enough to get a kick right on it. Actually, I don't think Errol Brain's in the strip. Oh, no, he's uh, not either. Squad. No, you're right. Saw the view down the barrel for Adrian Cashmore. This is an important kick to put the Blues beyond the two converted tries mark. It would put them 18 points, in fact, 17 points in front. Yep. Yep. And I like it when Cashmore's got that nice, easy rhythm. Strokes the ball smoothly. I've got a lot more confidence in him when he's like that. Straight between the uprights. Sad sight there on the sideline. Charles Rickleman. But he played a very big role in the game. 38 to 21. Tonubu. Spencer. A deep and flat. And Bandiri's going to come storming into the picture from the left. Very good chase by Joali. Well done, Carlos Spencer. It's just what the Blues needed. They've just got three points. Zanny would have been said, saying, get us down there. And Spencer has done just that. Get blue, please. Get the gap blue. Number two, blue. Number two, blue. No, second man. Sorry, second man. Jason Chandler into the game for Rickleman. Number 19 on the field, that's Dieter Krisa. Honeyball. Clark. Very strong man. Honeyball, the tackler. Ola Brown rips it out. Blowers with his boot well taped up. There's a lot of muscle coming from the Blues now. Again, taking the short route. Lamu and Vendiri waiting in the wings. Will it come their way? It's a play on, says referee Erickson. But the whistle goes for a ball lost forward. And we can clearly see now that ball is a bit greasy. Junior will be disappointed he didn't clear that. And we see the territory there, 52-48 in the Blues' favour. So just a wee advantage which is really showing up on the scoreboard. 
Robert Dupria is in fact a South African test player himself, played against the All Blacks in 92. Was the number one halfback in Australia in the tour in 93. Kept used to find the best days are now. Tyshman, Dupria. Floats it over the top and the crowd cheers when he misses his mark. Notice it's Vendere out, marking small again at the moment. And now they just do a swap in centre field. Vendere comes over to the right. You see Jonah sauntering over to the left wing. Here we see the short line-out option being called. Robin Brook on his own at the front. Jason Chandler towards the rear with Craig Dowd and Olo Brown. It's gone on the tile side. Honey ball. Michael Jones buries it. Dupria fast off the floor. Thompson. The Blues have it. Joubert through on Clark. Robin Brook. Tonu very fast off the ground. Cashmore kicks through. Dupria going back. It bounced off the goalpost. Trouble. There could be a penalty. <laughs> Wayne Erickson was too scared <laughs> to give a penalty there. Perhaps he got it right. We need to see a replay to judge it properly. But you don't see that very often. In fact, if it's a try scored when you can put the ball against the padded upright there, then perhaps it should be a 22 if you do the same thing. Here we see it again on the Ford replay. Well, there it is. It touches the goalpost. Robert Dupree, Adrian Cashman trying to kick it free. Well, well Fitzy, I don't know really what Fitzy had done awfully wrong there. I think Wayne Erickson may be <laughs> just a little afraid to give anything towards the Blues at that particular time. Wayne Erickson was telling me the other day that there's been a new study about rugby and there's uh, now six more minutes of running in every rugby game on average. And he was saying that as a referee, that's more about new challenges. To, to run harder and be fitter. To keep up. Natal, 38 to 21 to the Blues. Andrews number five. Brook number four. Fitzpatrick in there as well. Shot of goal coming in. 38 to 21. Still 15 minutes to play. Natal never got going in the first half until there was about 10 minutes to go. So they're not out of this match yet, despite the fact there's 17 points difference. Natal can strike back very, very quickly. They've got some incredible firepower in that back line. I think they're feeling the pinch again, again uh, Grant, because uh, they Natal big forwards were standing there, leaning forward, hands on knees, breathing deep. A few blue sports doing that too, John. The I can pace see of the game yeah, yes. incredible. we have Adrian Cashmore 40 metres out and this is really with the southwesterly wind directly behind him just got to put this towards the middle distance should not be a problem low and flat and underneath no change Here's a bit of trivia for you, ladies and gentlemen. The Mexican wave going around the ground is going a different direction from last week's. <laughs> We're going clockwise or anti-clockwise? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to think about it, but it was going the other way. Anti-clockwise today. Anti-clockwise today. 
That's the natural way in the Southern Hemisphere, isn't it, John? Isn't that the way the, ball, the water goes out of the sink? Absolutely. <laughs> Honeyball. Joubert. Pass Lomu. Gets the bounce. Clark. They, he was really collared then, wasn't he? That pulled the collar right back against his throat. The ball was on the floor and was played by the hands by Natal players. And they're going to have another shot at goal. And this is also uh, going for points, but it's occupying a bit of time. Well, I was going to suggest this could well be out of Adrian Cashmore's range. But I think the key issue here from Zinzan's point of view is time. I saw Spencer coming up to take the line kick, which may well have been a better option, but I can understand Zinzan's desire just to run the time clock down a wee bit. Happy Aucklanders. Happy Blues fans. This one's going to have a little bit of right to left on it as the breeze will push the ball towards the left hand upright. So Cashmore has to get a good piece of this because if he gets under it a wee bit, distance will be a problem. So Cashmore with his second attempt in the few minutes low and flat and away no change to the score it's still 38 to 21 stand by hold on still 12 minutes to play well Keith we had uh, that fantastic try by Charles Rickleman you all raved about it and uh, Charles is with me now he's off injured how did it feel that great dive of yours <laughs> Yeah, um, the trial was good. felt really awesome, but uh, I think uh, I thought I thought I was going to get concussed because everybody kind of uh, jumped on my head and slapped me on the head. So, uh, yeah, but it was awesome. Yeah, it must be a great feeling out there, the way the team's going at the moment. Yeah, it's good. We uh, kind of fell asleep for the last uh, 10, 15 minutes in the second half, but uh, we decided to come back and try to uh, rectify that and kind of play a bit better. OK, thanks very much, well Charlie. Thank good you. on you. So, the game goes on. Rickleman, one of the heroes today, but on the sideline, 38 to 21. Honeyball, Garvey, lost forward, intercept by Nawamo, taken by Fitzpatrick, I think it is, off the floor beautifully to Spencer, pushing Natal back, that's demoralising, kicking again for Spencer, not a particularly happy blow though. Yeah, but well thought out, wasn't quite well enough executed, he wanted more distance, he wanted a little bit further into the corner there, inside the 22 metre zone. But it was the right option. Well done, Carlos Spencer. Well, the noise now, it's We Will Rock You. Sounding around the ground. This Auckland crowd is really humming. So Atherton going high. 10 minutes to play. Rugby Super 12 final. It's not over yet, but it's a good lead for the Auckland Blues. Honeyball. Thompson. Excellent passing, but the last one to Jubair didn't quite work. So Small rushes into Nawamo. Here they go again. Muir, Cabos van der Bestesen. Oh, strong tackle. It looked like a bit of a head high. It's there for the Blues. Coming out the way of Vendiri and Cashmore. And it's just taken the touch. Wrong option by Carlos Spencer. The ball needed to be kept in hand there. And there he's got a smile on his face about that, but I think he'd have preferred Carlos Spencer to give him the Here we have here. Give it quickly, Carlos. That's what needed to be done on the forward replay. Despite the fact numbers were there, John Allen was one of them. Vendere, I'm sure, would have backed himself against him. 
Natal. They seem to have a lot of the sting out of their play at the moment. The Blues have got a wee bit of dominance at scrum time. We suggested before the match that perhaps that was an area where the Blues may have an edge. And right at this time, critical scrum for Natal on defence, but equally the Blues will be keen to put them under pressure and secure possession down this end of the field. The Natal backs are lined out in an attacking formation behind the goal line there. You see, they're not up on the line. Teichman's sprinting clear. Banderi's ahead. And now he's given it to Robert Dupria. Cashball lines him up. Hits him hard. Good breakout, though, by Teichman and Dupria. Gary Teichman, the Natal captain. Andrew Blowers had gone in on the scrum here, and that's why Teichman broke free. You did well here to Robert Dupria. Cashmore did well on defence there. Dupria freeing the ball well, but cover defence by Johnny Noamo. Good tackle by Dito Krisa. Seven minutes left in the game. Teichman trying to inspire his team. Look at those lineouts. Clean wins for Auckland. Four, 16 for Natal. Adrian Garvey, Steve Atherton. They peel away. And it's gone to Michael Jones, but there was interference at the jump. I put it to you, Grant, that's too much noise. I couldn't hear the whistle there. I believe that to be the case. Wayne Erickson did blow the whistle early, but there is a lot of noise around Eden Park. Natal won't take the shot here. They're looking for the tap. Perhaps the good option here would have been for Honeyball to put the ball down to the corner with their line-out strength. Oli Daru. Dupria. Change of mind. Honeyball. Two tacklers, Jones and Blowers. They live out in the west, only live a couple of minutes from each other, and they play the game like their neighbours. Zinzanbrook, Sean Fitzpatrick. Good tackle by Creasa, the replacement, number 19, and he's won the ball. Dupria. Garvey. Here they come again. Dupria again. Some fast men here, small. Come on, front of Vestazen. Michael Jones, who else is there? The two fullbacks meet. Joubert. And it's there. And I think that might be a try for Natal. Lost forward. Lost forward in goal. Thank you, five metres. Five metre scrum. Oh, we're seeing on the forward replay here. The Blues should really should take the ball over the touchline, but hard to judge that. Your blue, Joubert claimed the try. You need to see that again. Perhaps he was right. Seemed like his hand tapped down on the ball. But it's a chance now for the Orchid Blues. to 21 at Eden Park the Rugby Super 12 final ticking down to its dramatic come away please Blue to your right Blue thank you Dupria as the game resumes So a kick for touch from a penalty at Eden Park as referee Erickson calls out to the Natal team what well, that was for. And Yus Joubert wants to come into the game. Yeah, 
This is the cousin of uh, Andre Joubert. James Small is going off limping to the sideline. The medico was trying to stop him to have a yarn to him, but he just kept going and sat down. So it's gone to Oli LaRue, number one. Two props there, Garvey and LaRue making good progress. Dupria, Honeyball, Muir. And there's a bit of a tussle away to the right, you see, between Blowers and Honeyball. And now here's Auckland. Playing it into space. The game's getting a bit messy. Holding the jersey. Lotto. Holding the jersey. I think the players suspect it's all over and they're just playing out the time. And it's getting a bit knocked out of shape. Some tired boys out there. Spencer just driving the nail home for the Blues. Good touch finder there on the penalty. For the first time in the last three or four minutes, the Blues are in the half of Natal. And, of course, you know what happens when boys get tired, they get crabby. <laughs> Is that right, John? <laughs> I think they've got every right to be a little bit crabby. They've worked very hard this afternoon, both sets of players. Jonah Lomu's in the line-out. How about that? Jonah Lomu, number 11, has joined the line-out. And What's where's Tanuhu? it going to go? It goes to Tanuhu at the front to Fitzpatrick. A clever little decoy. And now they're spinning it. And who's got it? The man himself. This could be the climax the fans are looking for as it spins wide and blowers. He signals the victory and scores the try. The Super 12 is going to be won by the Auckland Blues. I think it goes back to Lomu appearing in the lineup and a good little dummy. It went five metres. Away they went. Foxy, an excellent try. Well, this is one they'd practice in one of those closed training sessions, Keith. Jonah was the decoy. Then he was the runner. He committed the loose forwards. So it was hard for the Natal backs to drift. We went again to set it up. Spencer, the cutout pass, which they do at all second phase. And Clark, good vision. Wide to blowers. That's the second extra man. They didn't need him out there because Vendiri could have done the job. But really, with... A minute and a half to go. It's all over, Rover. Joelle and Jonah, the Bruise Brothers, it says. Not the Blues Brothers, but the Blues Brothers, the Auckland Blues Brothers, have taken this game out in spectacular style with a 43-21 score and a signal from Blowers, one of the players of the series for the team. And that is a stylish way to wrap it all up. Well, Andrew Blowers, he led the try scoring for a while. That's his eighth try in Super 12. So the Super 12 championship began way, way back with the Auckland Blues against the Wellington Hurricanes. And a lot of people in New Zealand were sceptical at that point about whether it would work. It's worked to a treat. And Auckland are taking it with a final flourish from Cashmore. Just a little bit more, 45 to 21. It's been a vehicle for players like Blowers to come zooming up the charts as we see this last one again. Watch this, Auckland Blues fans. Watch this, New Zealand rugby, and celebrate because that's what Andrew Blowers is doing. The game resumes. Lomu has it. It took three of them to get him down. Andrews came in over the top. Jonas, I wonder where those shorts went, the ones that should go to the museum. And what's annoying to the tacklers is he gets up grinning. <laughs> He's obviously enjoyed his afternoon, John. I think so. He's been in a lot of play today. His work rate's been really high. Probably the highest it's been in any match during Super 12 for Jonah. Atherton. Teichman, LaRue, the crowd has counted down to zero. The referee wants the game to go on just a little bit longer, and it's come for the Auckland Blues, and offside blue, we're playing referee's time now.
So what can Natal do? As we look at Zinzanbrook, Flowers makes a strong tackle. Get up and blue, get up and blue. Spinning along the line. Honeyball, who looked for a while like he might chip out a victory for Natal. Tony Ubek. And did he touch it down? Yes, he did. It's over. It's over. Zinzan Brook and the Auckland Blues are Rugby Super 12's first champions with a 45 to 21 win over the Natal Sharks. The Blues men, yes, they were perfect today. Few rocky roads along the way, but they got there in the end. And this is a very important victory for Auckland and, can I say, Grant Fox, New Zealand rugby. Very important win for New Zealand rugby. Last year, they were unable to lift the World Cup. The South Africans were too good at Alice Park. Very important for New Zealand rugby that one of our Super 12 sides carried the Super 12 trophy home. And the Blues did it in style this afternoon. And I just must make a mention here, Keith, because Richard Fromont came to the box before the game and said, if we win by 20 points, you've got to say it on air. And he picked it before the game. He was confident the Blues would get there by 20, and he had a little bit of room to spare as well. Have a look there at these guys. Have a look at Andrew Roos in there celebrating with the boys. He's the hooker that never got a game for the Blues. He sat on the bench right through, and he's part of the celebration now. Andrew Roos, the county's hooker. There it is. The parties are beginning. The presentation will follow. Auckland 45, Natal 21. Come back and see this presentation in just a few minutes from now. It's party time at Eden Park. The Auckland Blues... They haven't done a running victory lap around the stadium. It's been a slow and leisurely walk, but they've got right around, and since Zanbrook has made sure that every part of the field has been thanked by his players by himself before they come forward to make the presentation. It's been fantastic. The Natal players were encouraged by their coach, Ian McIntosh, to also make a lap of the ground, and they've done that too, to a tremendous ovation, an ovation that all of New Zealand can be proud of. These guys are beaten, disappointed, and they'll be very sad inside, but they were given a tremendous reception. And there's Andrew Roos, the hooker who never played a game for the Blues, but he was reserved in every single outing, the fact is, Sean Fitzpatrick is just too tough and won't come off for injuries. But Bruce, part of the winning team today. Joubert, what a brilliant try that was. He scored, being uh, typically himself. And he's happy enough. I think they realise that you can't deny a 45-21 to 21 score. Well, Grant, the crowd uh, set new standards last week. But uh, it was terrific again today, probably even, probably even better. Last week was spontaneous on the day. For this game, the build-up had gone all week and climaxed this afternoon. So now we're going to have the presentation of the trophy for Rugby Super 12 1996. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Auckland Ruben O'Neill, the county's Manukau chairman of the Rugby Auckland Union, Rugby Union, we offer a special thanks to the public of the Auckland region for their tremendous support of the Auckland Blues team. In this Rugby Super 12 series, as seen today, thank you one and all. I'd like now to introduce the Prime Minister of New Zealand, the Right Honourable Mr Jim Bolger. Prime Minister of New Thank Zealand. Thank you very much. I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to congratulate the Auckland Blues on their victory today. I think it was an outstanding game of rugby and I would therefore like to extend congratulations and commiserations to Natal who entered into the spirit of one of the outstanding games that we have seen here at Eden Park for many a year. So to Aucklanders... Aucklanders, I want to say thank you for supporting the final 
and giving that tremendous support to Zinzan Brook and his team. They showed how rugby can be played at the highest level and what an entertaining sport it is when you see athletes like the calibre we've seen on the park play today. So congratulations, everyone. Rather typically, a Thank bit of a mixed reception Minister. for the Prime Minister. I wonder First what kind of reception there'll be for the next the man. New Zealand Rugby Football Union, Mr Don Sugar. Well, in fact, the, the man that makes the presentation, the man on the right there, Louis Thank Lake. This is Don Sugar Ladies from Counties. Gentlemen. First of all, it gives me great pleasure on behalf of the New Zealand Rugby Union to congratulate the Auckland Blues. They've had a, a fantastic performance, especially over the last three games. They played so well, and that's what's won them the competition. A special congratulations to the captain, Zinzan Brook. The two coaches, Graham Henry and Mac McCallion, and all their support team. Commiserations to the Natal Sharks. They're an outstanding team and a very worthy finalist. <laughs> Last of all, I'd like to thank all the public that have watched IPC games in New Zealand, Australia and South Africa to make it the outstanding success it has been. Thank you very much. Don Shuka, the President of the New Zealand Rugby Football Union. I would now like to ask Mr Louis Late, Chairman of Zanzar. <laughs> to make the presentation. Thank you. We have the Captain of Auckland, please, and Sam Brook. So there's Dr Late. I'm sure after the World Cup final last year, Zinzan will be enjoying this. It's obviously diff difficult for them in Johannesburg last year, having to shake Louis Lake's hand, who was then part of the victorious South African setup. Okay, just play it. we're having at the moment but we think you'll Craig enjoy Gowden. staying with us for this presentation there's dr late pre pre presenting to fitzpatrick four, Robin Brook. and a proud moment for sean as each of the players coming up number five down. charles reicherman number six iceman jones <laughs> number six iceman jones Number seven, Andrew Blowers. Number nine, Junior Tanu. Number ten, Carlos Spencer. Number eleven, Jonah Lomu. Number fourteen. Number twelve, Johnny Namu. Number 13, a Ronnie Clark. Number 11, Wally Terry. Number 15, Adrian Cashmore. Number 16, Harlan Scott. We do apologise for the sound problems we're experiencing here. As the players come up to get their presentation medal, Dr. from Sanza. Number 21, Andrew Roos. Go, 
coach, Graham Henry and Mac McCallion. And Graham Henry heading across to get his medal. And a great, tremendous moment for Graham and a well thought out game plan coach, today. Mac McCallion. And Mac McCallion going uh, up. Paul Wilson. The county's coach has been the, in charge of the forward drills with the Auckland Blues. And a big moment for Mac McCallion. Dr. Graham Patterson. And manager Rex Davey. the manager. We now call for Auckland Blues fans have been waiting for tremendous victory for them today. We now call and they're the first the winners the of a splendid trophy. So now coming up is Gary Teichman. And there are medals for all of the beaten team squad as well. And so we do apologize for the sound problems we're having. Technical problems there with the sound from Eden Park. Ollie LaRue, John Allen, Adrian Garvey, the Zimbabwe international who plays his rugby in Durban. Steve Atherton and Mark Andrews. And Vickers van Heerden, his brother was an All Black and played against the All Blacks 20 years ago. Thompson and Muir, the two centres, James Small and Andre Joubert. Now the reserves, actually Eustace Joubert is the cousin of the fullback got on the field. Roland De Mornay there, Robert Dupria, Dieter Krisa, John Slade there. And the last man up is the Argentinian, Federico Mendez, who's the Argentinian test rugby player, now playing his rugby in Durban. Robert Dupria, Dieter Krisa, these guys have both played in the game. John Slade, the big lock forward. And the last man, Federico Mendez. So here's Ian McIntosh coming forward to get his medal from Dr. Louis Late. Assistant coach, the former Springbok Hughes, Rhys Edwards, and there's Craig Jamison, the manager. And the whole of their team coming up now, physio Greg McKenzie, Dr. Craig Springgate. And the last man to come up will be Kevin Stevenson, the fitness coordinator of the Natal Sharks. And I'd also like to thank for what they've done this tournament. Thank you. The presentation of the trophies. Today, and we look forward to hearing the park in the future. Good day. So there it is, Rugby Super 12 over for 1996, the tournament which began 69 games ago. And the 444 tries later, it's come to its conclusion with the Auckland Blues, the winners. They averaged 6.43 tries a game in this tournament and 56.3 points per match. It really has changed the way the world rugby game is being played now. And the Auckland Blues, out of the 12 top teams that took part, were simply the best at it. And they line up now. We'll be back for the final analysis on how Auckland did it. And it's all beginning to celebrate here. A 45 to 21 score. In the Auckland Blues changing room, it's pretty quiet. I think they're a bit embarrassed because the camera's here. I don't know. Or maybe they've, they've shot off all their noise uh, outside. But Dick, now you were just about right, weren't you? Richard Fromont said before the game, 20 points. Yeah, but I'm pretty happy with the boys. They, they annihilated them, didn't they? <laughs> I think you got horse, didn't you, when you were yelling so much? Oh, geez, you had to. It was just fantastic to be part of that out there today. I mean, you know, with the crowd and everything. On your Auckland. Okay. Great crowd. Okay, come on. Let's have a chat. To John Naomu. Naomu. 
Well, we, Naomi. Naomi. Okay. No, no, Keith Quinn was telling us how to pronounce it. John, what sort of feeling have you got now? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Did you uh, score that try or not? Uh, I don't know. It was both of us, actually. I just pushed him over and we both fell on it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll share it two and a half we'll share, each. We'll share it. <laughs> what a feeling, though, out there with that crowd and, and the way particularly Auckland started both halves. Oh, it was brilliant. Uh, I just hope they can come back for the NPC. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it might be a bit difficult, yeah, might it? might be difficult. Okay, let's have a man who missed the semi-final, of course, Carlos Spencer, came back into the final today. Carlos, uh, a great feeling to be out there and to play with such a fine team. Yeah, excellent. Um, yeah, I just glad it's over. Uh, yeah. It's a great performance, yes. Uh, very happy. Heads. All right, indeed. Yeah. What, what sort of service did you get from this guy here? Um, excellent. He played. Uh, he's been playing well all year, I think, and um, he played really well today. And um, it was just great to be outside him. Yeah. Uh, can I just say, uh, yeah, sure. Um, happy 21st to uh, my mate Neeps back in the Nua. Best wishes, mate. You'll be celebrating for him. <laughs> Next door to him, number nine here, Junior Tanu'u. Junior, what a game today. Oh, it's just, uh, I don't know, just can't describe the feeling like uh, being part of the team. I don't know what it was like out watching it, but uh, it was great to be, uh, be in, in involved. And you're getting involved in the lineups there as well, late in the game. <laughs> oh, yeah, I might be sure, but, you know, still probably got the best two-hand take of the day. <laughs> yeah, I better watch oh, out for that, hey? Uh, yeah. Can I just say thanks to my brother Henny at home for helping out during your week and uh, say hi to all the family in Wellington. I thought Henny was coming up here for this. Oh, no, no. He's, Couldn't uh, get away. <laughs> OK, Sean and oh, the, the old timers, the old brigade. Look at them. All those in their 30s now. The old corner. Yeah, the old corner. Hey? Accurate throwing, home, great performance. Home ground. Home ground. Home ground. <laughs> okay, did you ask for that in Australia once, didn't you? <laughs> I think it's quite ironical that the final's on TV1 yep. and the people on the West Coast... Can watch it. Can watch it. And the rest of the country <laughs> as well. Thank everyone on the West Coast for giving us such a great start this year. Down there. It was great, wasn't it? Yeah, hey, it was awesome. Sturge and the boys. Yeah. So, thank you. Hey, was, that, was it like a test out there or not? Um, I don't know. I think, I think it's, it seemed a bit more relaxed and uh, everyone, I think, really enjoyed the occasion, which uh, was fantastic. It was just wonderful um, to be out there and be involved in such a great game. Great, Sean. Well done. Nice to win something. Absolutely. Well, you've had, um, we've had the Blues Brothers, of course, the, uh, the, the Blues Brothers, the Bruise Brothers and the Brook Brothers are here, sporting a bruise or two, two zins in. Yeah, oh, yeah, got a couple along with uh, everyone else, but, uh, you know, you don't feel them when, it, uh, when you get a victory like that. They're, they're very nice to have. Let's have a look at this cup. Is this the, this is it? This is it. Uh, what does it say? Rugby Super 12 champions. No, it hasn't even got the year. What's the year on it? No team been inscribed on it. Obviously, uh, Auckland be on there, but... We're the first. Okay. Awesome. All right. And, and Robin, a uh, quick word from you. you. You battled through that, some hard work in the line-outs, but it was probably a bit easier because you didn't have to jump in when they were throwing the ball in. Oh, they got a fair bit of line-out ball today, but, uh, you know, we won the battle in the line-outs last week, probably uh, lost it this week, but uh, all the same, uh, you know, a great performance by the team and uh, awesome, awesome crowd. Yep. You know, great to be out there and playing in front of that crowd. It's fantastic.